Hi everybody, my name's Patrick Martin, and I'll be walking you through setting up Firebase Authentication in Unity. In this video, I'll go over the basics you need to quickly and easily provide your players with an identity in your game. From here, you can either use the Firebase Authentication Admin SDK to run your own custom backend, or use any of Firebase's backend-as-a-service products to create dynamic living spaces in which your game and its players can grow. In this video, I want to show you how you can authenticate a player using an email address and password. This is one of the easiest methods of player authentication and doesn't require any third-party SDK to function. To start, I have this really fun game where I periodically mine some, you know, resource so that I can later craft items with it. I want to persist player progress into the cloud, and in order to do that, I'm going to need to know who this player is. So, let's see how I can get my players some user accounts and fast. Before you begin, you should already have a Firebase project set up and linked to this Unity game. If this is your first time using Firebase, or you need a brief reminder, the basics are covered in this video. There's a link in the description below if you need to reference it later. For Firebase authentication, you want to add the Firebase Auth Unity package from the zip file you downloaded in the previous video. Since I'm using .NET for my project, I'll pull in the package from the similarly named folder. Next, I'll want to enable email and password authentication in the Firebase console. I'm going to head on over to the Firebase console, select my project, head on over to the authentication section, then select sign-in methods. Then I flip the switch here to enable email password sign-in. So, back in my Unity project, I have a brief loading screen whose entire purpose is to call check and fix dependencies async. Once that completes, I automatically load a main menu. So let's open that up. What I'll want to implement first is this registration scene. Your users will want you to do a little bit of user experience work, though, before making this call. Here, I've made sure that Unity treats the email input as an email field. I've also added two password fields and set their content type to password. And I created a fast little script that makes sure the user puts something in the email field and that their passwords match. Let me hit play real fast so you can see this in action. Here, I'm entering my credentials and you can see that the game yells at me because the passwords don't match. For performing the actual registration, I have a separate button script. If I look at this in the inspector, it takes a registration flow as well as a registration button to listen for clicks on. It also raises events for success and failure. I don't want to go over the Unity event system in detail right now, but if you hit play, you can see that it's showing a failure dialog, telling me that I need to implement registration. There's nothing to do now but abide. If I start at the top, I have a button and a register email flow as dependencies. I try to help out developers using my script by doing a first pass discovery of these during my reset callback. Then, in start, I register all of my event handlers and get to a nice default state. I use update interactable to control when this button is clickable. That is, when the register email flow has all the necessary information and we're not in the process of registering a user. Finally, I get down into my event handler section where I can focus on handle button clicked. I have a coroutine that I start here called register. If I look at its implementation, I see that it just sets the coroutine to null and recomputes button enabled. Let's fill this out. First, I'll grab an instance to the auth. Next, I'll start the user registration by calling create user with email and password async, storing the resulting task. Now notice that this is a coroutine. There are many ways to handle asynchronous calls in Firebase. I personally prefer this method as it slots in very well with the Unity mono behavior lifecycle. Is complete should become true whether registration succeeds or fails, so I'll just wait until that becomes true. A note here Unity will check this condition on the task every frame between the update and late update until the task completes. This is not necessarily the most efficient way to perform this sort of logic, but it's certainly the most foolproof. Now, when that task completes, I'll first check to see if anything went wrong. 
You should perform this check since exceptions are raised for typical conditions like an email address already being registered or passwords being too short. Finally, I'll raise a notification when this succeeds. Testing this out, I can see that it runs. I can also jump over to the Firebase console to see my newly created user. I can access this user data in a game as well. Let's create a quick script to act as the player label. I can easily just call currentuser.userID to find the ID of the user. This is a unique ID that is associated with every user who signs in with Firebase Auth, no matter how they sign in. I can also call currentuser.email to show the email address. Another cool fact, if you use any other Firebase Unity plugin that's aware of user accounts, the token for this user session is automatically sent along. For example, if you have access rules around the Firebase database, these are now automatically applied without any additional work on your part. I won't cover access rules here, but there are some awesome resources on that subject, including this awesome I.O. talk from 2016. You may have noticed that I appear to remain logged in between runs of the Unity editor. This isn't some fancy movie magic. Like most of the Firebase client SDKs, Firebase authentication does much more than just wrap REST calls for you. In the case of authentication, it will actually cache your user information and securely persist it between runs of your app. For this app, this means that I can write a quick script that just checks to see if a player is logged in so they don't have to type their password every time a game starts. This is an excellent user experience win that I just get for free. To see how this works, I'll switch back to my main menu scene and write a quick script to load a scene when the user is logged in. So first, I take a scene to load as a serialized field. Then, I register for the auth state changed event, passing it a function named handle auth state changed. This function simply calls check user. I'll also jump back up and execute check user right after registration. I can't forget to unregister this event and on destroy. Finally, the meat of this mono behavior is in check user. I just check if the current user is not null, then I ask Unity Scene Manager to load Scene to Load. If I add this to my main menu scene, I can make it load the game if I'm already signed in. Let's hit play to see how this works. By changing the conditional to current user equals to null, I can instead load a scene when the user is logged out. If I go over into the game scene, you can see this load scene when user logged out script. I would demonstrate this working, but first I need to log a player out. To do this, I have this log out button and a placeholder script. Logging out is probably one of the simplest Firebase functions you can call. It's synchronous, so you don't have to yield or await any task, and has no return value, so there's not much to handle after calling it. Here, I'll make the logout button just implement iPointerClickHandler, so it automatically receives an onPointerClick event if attached to something like a button. Then I'll just call default instance sign out. That's it. Let's test this out. Note that your user credentials are persisted even in the editor, so when I hit play, I'm already logged in, and now I can click logout to get back to the main menu. Now for the last thing I need a login scene so that a user who already has an account can sign in. I've already thrown something together, so let me open that up. If I press play now, I can see that it looks just like the registration scene. I can inspect the login button and see that there's a login button script just like the registration button. It takes a button, but also an email and password field directly since there isn't complicated UI state management here. I also see that it has a success and failure callback. And if I press login now, I get an error just like registration asking me to implement it. So just like the registration button, I have everything filled out except the login logic. I start by calling sign in with email and password async. Then I save the task that returns. Then I wait until that task completes. Finally, I notify any listeners and clear the login coroutine and call it a day. If I run this in the editor, it works just as expected. I can log in as the user I just created. 
I built this all out in the Unity Editor, and editor support is one of my favorite features of the Firebase plugin. Given this, don't forget to run your game on your phone once you've gotten everything else working. It's easy to build a UI that won't scale down well. With all that, you should be ready to authenticate your users. So, where do we go from here? You should start looking into any authentication providers that your users may expect in your app. One I love is Anonymous Authentication, which lets you log in a single installation of your game rather than some user account, so you can just postpone the user account creation process without restricting your connected features. You can also integrate login buttons for common social networks, as well as play games on Android and Game Center on iOS. Now would also be a great time to investigate Firebase Real-Time Database. Firebase Cloud Storage, or Firebase Cloud Functions, as all of these products integrate seamlessly with Firebase Authentication. Let me know what you build using Firebase Authentication, or what you want me to cover next time, either in the comments below or at Puxer on the Twitter. Until next time, stay awesome! <laughs>